Good afternoon. Palm oil prices have suffered a major decline, falling to $790, $800 in Rotterdam for crude palm oil in early October. Created unusually wide discounts relative to soybean oil and other vegetable oils. Is this going to continue? I doubt it very much. I see palm oil undervalued for several reasons. And I will highlight the major features looking at competing supplies of uh, other vegetable oils, also looking at the global situation in soybeans, rapeseed and other oil seeds, and also looking at the demand developments. Uh, palm oil stocks are record high in Malaysia and Indonesia at the moment, which is to a large extent uh, uh, discounted in current prices, or probably totally discounted. Um, and we see some indications that palm oil prices have started to recover in the second, in the second week of October. Now, if we look at the, at the uh, graph here, um, a significant decline in RBD palm oil in prices from Malaysia uh, to $800 in early October, um, almost back to the level of July 2010. But what is most stri striking is the big discount relative to soybean oil uh, of approximately $250. This is unsustainable. Also, palm oil prices have fallen back to or even slightly below the prices of Brent mineral oil in Rotterdam in early October with a discount of 10 to $20 uh, expressed in US dollars per ton. This has considerably improved the price competitiveness of palm oil for energy purposes. I believe that consumers will take advantage of the current attractive palm oil prices which are below the fundamentally justified level, in my opinion, while at the same time exporters are ready sellers owing to the currently large stocks. Prospective sizable declines in world export supplies of sunflower oil, rapeseed oil and soybean oil will considerably, considerably shift world demand in favor of palm oil. In fact, the global market will, will become increasingly dependent on palm oil and we are likely to see a substantial increase in world consumption of palm oil uh, by approximately 3.7 million tons according to our latest estimates from a year ago during October, September 2012-13. A big increase. So the palm oil is needed and considerably higher quantities are needed because of reduced supplies of competing oils. Let us briefly review the latest developments in oil seeds. Last Thursday, the USDA government announced a substantial upward revision of the US soybean crop by 6.2 million tons. This was quite surprising, uh, although not totally unexpected. Uh, prices of soybeans already had declined significantly over the past three weeks in expectation of an upward revision as a result of the uh, favorable field reports. This was now confirmed with uh, the upward revision at the high end of expectations, placing the US crop at 77.8 million tons, which is still down from 84 million tons last year and 91 million tons in 2010. The, U the US soybeans 
are losing acreage to corn and this is likely to continue also in the spring of 2013 because of the shortage in corn. And this was again highlighted last week when the USDA reduced its corn carry-out estimate, uh, fueling corn prices. And in fact, soybean prices followed corn and also appreciated despite the significant upward revision in the soybean crop. Partly because of uh, the forthcoming acreage competition uh, between corn and soybeans in the spring of 2013 in the US. And this should keep soybean prices supported. And secondly, um, most of the um, impact, bearish impact of the higher crop had already been discounted by the preceding price action. U.S. soybean supplies are still tight, uh, down from a year ago, and forcing a sizable decline in soybean crushings and exports in the full season. On the world basis, soybean supplies are down sharply by approximately 27 million tons because of the much reduced supplies in South America. This will enforce a decline in world crushings of soybeans by approximately 3.5 million tons during September, February. 3.5 million ton decline from a year ago, which will result in a corresponding decline in world production of soya oil and meal. One factor which will contribute to higher demand of palm oil in the next six months. Secondly, developments in South America are of course of great importance. Farmers are ready to plant a record area this year responding to the attractive prices. However, weather anomalies are again experienced in South America. But contrary to last year's drought, we now have typical El Nino type weather pattern in South America with rainfall in recent weeks 200 to 300 percent of normal in the key Argentine uh, agricultural area, Buenos Aires province, Santa Fe, Entre Rios, parts of Cordoba, delaying field work. At the moment this is affecting mainly corn, but there is concern that the area of at least 5 million hectares, some say more, of inundated land may not be dried out sufficiently to allow soybean plantings in time. So there is a risk factor and a new risk factor which we should look at. Secondly, in Rio Grande do Sul in, South America, in, in southern Brazil, uh, rainfall has been uh, sharply uh, uh, above average delaying field work. Soybean plantings were expected to start in September. This was not possible over the past three weeks because of too much rainfall. And additional rainfall is likely to arrive in coming days. There are forecasts, and I know longer term weather forecasts are not very reliable, but there are forecasts of a continuation of above average rainfall during October, December, in several parts of South America, and if that happens, there is the risk that the total area planted to oil seeds and grains will fall short of potential, and secondly, that there will be uh, a higher incidence of diseases. So, there is uh, some risk, some new risk factor involved um, 
uh, whether the expected significant in, in increase in South American soybean production in early 2013 really materializes. We have to watch out. We have to look at this situation. Thirdly, world production of all other oil seeds except soybeans is declining this season by approximately 5 million tons in contrast to an increase of 10 million tons last year. And this is mainly in rapeseed and sunflower seed, um, which will enforce a decline in uh, crushings of the two oil seeds by a combined 3.5 million tons in October, September 2012-13. And that is going to be a very important factor because these are high oil yielding oil seeds um, and uh, such a decline in crushings will reduce oil production and oil export supplies, raising world demand for palm oil. And this will be uh, uh, one of the important factors behind the prospective increase in world import requirements of palm oil in the next 12 months. I think it's, uh, as a summary, it's an interesting graph here to look at the development of world crushings of the 10 major oil seeds, where we expect in our latest analysis a decline in world processing by a combined 5 million tons from a year ago in September, February in contrast to significant increases of 8 and 13 million tons one and two years earlier. You see, that's a major change in the fundamentals. And palm oil has to fill some of this supply gap. And that is why I pointed out before that I'm of the opinion that palm oil prices are currently undervalued and in fact a good buying opportunity. Now let us look at the um, prospects of exports for the four major uh, oils. Soybean oil, rapeseed oil, sunflower seed oil and palm oil. Um, the three seed oils are likely to suffer a decline in their exports by approximately 1.1, 1.2 million tons, according to our current forecast, in 2012-13. This is in sharp contrast to what we have seen uh, last season with a combined increase of 1.7 million tons. In April, September 2012, palm oil exports were surprisingly small and declined by 0.8 million tons from a year ago, partly because of very large exports of sunflower oil. And, and this in turn resulted uh, or, or contributed to the accumulation of record high stocks in Malaysia and Indonesia until the end of September. But the outlook for the next 12 months points to a considerable decline in supplies and exports of sunflower oil, rapeseed oil and soybean oil combined and palm oil has to fill the gap. And this is why we expect a considerable increase in palm oil imports and consumption. Imports may even increase further and above the 42.6 million tons we are currently projecting if uh, stocks, palm oil stocks in the importing countries are not reduced as much as we are currently forecasting for the next 12 months. Production of 10 seed oils from soybeans, sunflower seed, rapeseeds, rapeseed and other oil seeds 
production of 10 seed oils will not increase in 2012-13 for the first time in 20 years. Why? Because supplies are so tight, world supplies of oil seeds are so tight in the first half of the new season, reducing world crushings by, as we think, about 5 million tons, and remain relatively tight also in the second half of the season, although crushings are going to rise in the second half, but for the whole season, complete season, we are going to see a at least slight decline in total crushings of oil seeds. And as a result of that, we currently expect a fractional reduction of world production of seed oils in the next 12 months. For the first time in 20 years. Palm oil has to fill part of this demand which cannot be satisfied by seed oils. And palm oil is in the position to do this. Uh, it has become the by far largest vegetable oil worldwide, exceeding soybean oil. Uh, and, and, the, and, and this is very clear in the graph, palm oil continues to rise at a rather rapid pace actually exceeding earlier estimates also this year. Um, for 2012, we expect Indonesian production to reach approximately 26 million tons. Um, Malaysian production, approximately 18.5 million tons. For Indonesia, we forecast a year-on-year -year increase by approximately 2.0 million tons, while the Malaysian production is down approximately 0.4 million. This brings total production in calendar year 2012 to 52.3 million tons worldwide. Now let us, let us look at the success, what I call success story of palm oil. World production of palm oil doubled every 10 years and this doubling was of course getting more and more difficult as the basis increased. But over the past 10 years the production even more than doubled. Now what is interesting, what is interesting to realize is that in 2011, world palm oil production of 50.4 million tons accounted for 28% of world production of all 17 oils and fats on only 6% of the cultivated global oilseed area on 6%, 28% of the world production, and even 57% of world exports of oils and fats. Palm oil is the most productive crop per hectare uh, as compared and much better than, than uh, soybeans, rapeseed and other oilseeds. You know this in Malaysia. Many other people and many environmentalists making propaganda against palm oil, they don't know this, including Europe. Um, but we continue to need palm oil and we continue to need increasing quantities of palm oil in the world market. Uh, so don't slow down your plantings, don't slow down your plantings of oil palms, neither in Malaysia nor in Indonesia nor elsewhere, the consumer in the world market requires additional quantities of palm oil also in the future. In our long-range forecast, we are 
estimating that the world market needs 78 million tons of palm oil by the year 2020 compared with uh, 52 million tons in 2012. This is a substantial challenge within only eight years and it requires a continuation of large-scale plantings as well as more investments and, and more improvements in, in management, in breeding, to raise yields per hectare successfully. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for listening and look forward to our discussion over the phone. Thank you very much.